Kamala Harris knows she's in the fight of her life against Donald Trump. The upcoming debate will set the tone for the tail end of the election campaign and the Harris camp need all the help they can get. But luckily for Kamala, mainstream media has always been the unofficial propaganda arm of the Democrats and this election cycle is no exception. Sky News All-Stars James Morrow, Rita Panahi and Chris Kenny expose MSNBC, CNN and The View's creepy Kamala obsession. It was only a few months ago that the media were laughing along at Kamala's clumsiness with all of us. But as soon as she toppled Joe Biden to become the presidential candidate against Donald Trump, mockery turned to adoration, reveals Sky News All-Star James Morrow. Let's get on to Kamala Harris, shall we? Now, we have over the past several weeks been part of a remarkable campaign to remake Kamala Harris from a joke to a sort of revolutionary, transformative figure who will turn the page, as she constantly reminds us, unburdened by what has been. As Lance Morrow, hi dad, eloquently put it in the Wall Street Journal this weekend, quote, now incredibly, his, Kamala Harris is Wonder Woman, high priestess of the politics of joy, a daughter of Jamaica and India, come to rescue reactionary white America from itself. The Democrats in a few short weeks have mustered their own cult of personality around Ms. Harris, transfiguring the erstwhile hack into a world historical heroine, unquote. And yep, that's about it, but none of this would be possible without the media, which once upon a time wrote disparaging stories about her, which has now, like state media in a place like Russia or communist China, reversed course to support the new presumptive dear leader. Want an example? Well, here's the Washington Post. You know, the democracy dies in darkness, guys. In 2021, they said a Kamala Harris staff exodus reignites questions about her leadership style and her future ambitions. But what are they writing now? Not that Kamala Harris, a woman who went to a third-tier law school and failed the, failed the California bar, wasn't doing the reading. No, the problem with Kamala Harris now is she just works too hard. And any criticism? Well, there's a DEI card to play there, because as the Post writes, quote, the staff churn has spawned accusations of mismanagement by the vice president, but many Harris allies say that critique is overblown and sometimes rooted, you knew this was coming, in her gender and race, unquote. Well, uh, this is, of course, just like how all the different news outlets that happily reported on Harris's appointment to the role of border czar turned around and said she was never, never, she'd never been the border czar. I don't know what you're talking about when she was president. Sky News All-Star Rita Panahi agrees, slamming the hosts of The View for savagely insulting Trump supporters. Now to uh, the demented kind of way without the adorableness. Let's check in with the ladies of The View. And here one of them tries to make a sane, obvious point that you shouldn't be mean or disown friends or family whose politics differ from yours. It doesn't go well. First, there's pushback from Joy Behar and then Anna Navarro loses it. We shouldn't demean Trump supporters. We shouldn't call them no, names. We shouldn't say not. they're cultists or ignorant. They have issues. Because we all have them in our lives and we all, no, but we all have them in our lives yeah. and we love them. And if they don't change, it's not going to change my relationship with them. Well, I, I do think we should call them names. And I think Donald Trump, <laughs> I think, I think, uh, you know, I think Tim Walsh's brother is dumb as hell. Because if he jealous. gets into that vice presidential mansion, he's going to miss a lot of good parties if he's estranged from his brother. Yeah, forget about your principles. Think of the parties. Navarro was a hipping abused there on Tim Walz's brother for endorsing Trump. And MSNBC's Joe Scarborough hopped on the bandwagon using the old age tactic of fear to get people to support Kamala Harris, reveals Rita Panahi. Now let's go to MSNBC where the reliably hysterical Joe Scarborough is trying his darndest to be even more unhinged than Joy Reid. 
If you believe in American capitalism, you should be worried about Donald Trump being elected. We always talk about democracy. We always talk about democracy, Madisonian democracy under threat, because Madisonian democracy is under threat, but American capitalism also under threat. Yes, it's Donald Trump who is a threat to capitalism, not the far-left ideologue who wants to bring in Soviet-style price controls and her commie sidekick who talks about being unashamedly socialist. Don't ever, don't ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. CNN also wheeled out their human potato, a far-left activist who doesn't even try to hide his biases. Now to CNN, who are bringing back a far-left activist who rails against disinformation while pumping out nothing but disinformation. Yes, CNN is bringing back the human potato, Brian Stelter. They've hit rock bottom and started digging. Trump might have committed treason. You say the president is using mind control. What does Putin have on Trump? The U.S. president possibly working for the Russians. Is President Trump a racist? Is the Trump presidency a criminal presidency? There's no way to tweet yourself out of impeachment. Impeachment, 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 impeachment. Uh, what I hear on Fox is that the media is obsessed about impeachment. 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 Trump and some of his allies are promoting a hate movement against the American press. Why does Sarah Sanders still have a job? Is it time for newsrooms to think of new ways to convey Trump's lack of credibility? You might say the media hasn't earned your trust either. Okay, look up the stats for yourself. God bless CNN, they are slow learners. They and how could we forget that softball CNN interview, which many commentators said doubled as an advertisement for the Harris campaign. Former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer unleashed on the network for their lack of accountability. With um, that CNN interview, CNN interview that uh, Kamala Harris finally agreed to, the only one she's given in uh, you know a month and a half now 40. as candidate. What did you make of it? I mean, it was embarrassing to be honest with you. I, I think it was 50-50. I was embarrassed for CNN, who's supposed to who likes to talk about themselves as a legitimate news organization. Um, I mean, on a number of fronts, it was embarrassing, the lack of follow-up, the issues that were covered, um, the length and time. Uh, and, and let's be clear, this was, you know, I, I'll speak in language the left likes to talk about, the, their pronouns. This was supposed to be her interview, and it ended up being their interview. Um, it was kind of pathetic that she couldn't handle a one-on-one. -on -one. It looked like a... Uh, uh, a mix between a parent teacher student you know conference that you have for a child and then a deposition but she just she kept going back to my values haven't changed well then what did change but on every question that she was asked it was so staged phony and inauthentic but donald trump didn't miss an opportunity to exploit the obvious propaganda turning the clear media bias into an ad for his own campaign your brain keeps telling you anyone but trump if so, you might be struggling from TDS. Introducing Independence. Independence allows you the freedom to finally think independently once again. Instead of believing everything you hear from the mainstream media, independence allows for constructive critical thinking. I used to hear people on the news say things like, Donald Trump and the movement he has encouraged are a threat to democracy. And I instantly believed it. With independence, I now realize the media is run by the Democrat elite, who are a corrupt oligarchy that censors free speech. Independence may not be for everyone. If you enjoy being lied to about your president's cognitive abilities, support Orwellian totalitarianism, or are excited about communist fiscal policy, independence may not be right for you. Common side effects of independence may include an awakening of rational thought, successfully identifying propaganda, freedom of choice, loss of hatred, anti-narcissistic behavior, and love of democracy. And on the eve of the all-important ABC debate between Trump and Harris, the media are working overtime to give Kamala a free ride, reveals Sky News All-Star Chris Kenny. Just two days now till the first presidential debate between Republican candidate and former President Donald Trump, of course, up against the Democrat candidate and serving Vice President Kamala Harris. The media has been fawning over Harris. As you know, there's been little to no scrutiny and accountability, one soft interview. And despite all the hoopla and the gushing praise and the high-profile endorsements from the Democrat National Convention, the honeymoon already looks to be over. 
Sky News All-Star Paul Murray agrees, saying the media have flipped their message on Kamala Harris right before the debate. But let's be clear. The debate, I believe, is going to be a full court press of the media to say Harris has now finally hit the bar of being presidential. She has finally hit the bar of being ready to lead. Now, we saw no convention bump after all those people from Oprah to former presidents were saying she's the greatest, she's the greatest, the media going she's the greatest. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. I think you will see the media trying to immediately build the narrative from the second the debate is over, that not that she just didn't win, but she is now. She doesn't ever have to acknowledge him again. But not everyone is buying into the narrative, with Elton John, of all people, exposing the agenda of the media. Joining me now is entertainment and royal reporter Kinsey Schofield. Let's start with Elton John, who, unlike most celebs, refused to accept a free kick from Variety magazine to bash Donald Trump. He was asked his reaction to President Trump liking his music and calling North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un a little rocket man. How did it feel when he took the lyrics to Rocket Man and he used it as a nickname for Kim Jong Un and then he gave Kim Jong Un? <laughs> I a laughed. CD. I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> I just thought, good on you, Donald. I'm the Rocket Man. Yeah. Um, I mean, Donald's always been a fan of mine and he's been to my concerts many, many times. Um, so, I mean, I've always been friendly towards him and I, I, I thank him for his uh, support. Yeah, when he did that, I just thought it was hilarious. It, was, it made me laugh. Seem the interviewer wanted a viral moment, uh, Kinsey. He didn't get it. Uh, Elton said it was brilliant. That's right. It wasn't that great. I mean, I love that Elton John refused the clickbait. But also, we've had this discussion before. How disappointing is it when we find out that the Foo Fighters are threatening to sue or that Celine Dion is offended by the fact that Donald Trump, you know, is playing her music at his rally? Um, you know, people of all different faiths, of all different uh, political backgrounds, are love music. And the fact that Celine Dion is cutting off an entire group of people now and offending this entire group of people now by, by criticizing Trump and not allowing him to play her music. So Elton John, I'm gonna go buy more of your albums now. I'm gonna go buy an Elton John t-shirt and I'm going to thoroughly enjoy Elton John's music now knowing that he's not playing the hate game.